Hello YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, a while back when I was talking a lot about nitrates and nitrate reduction, nitrate testing, water testing, things like that, I promised you an interview with a gentleman who's a bit of a, a, bit of a legend in our, uh, in our hobby, Richard Threw, who is better known as the Pond Guru. He actually helped me out originally in the setting up of canister filters, uh, the correct sequence of media, things of this nature, with his Pimp, uh, Pimp Your Filter series, which I'll put a link below that you can look at. But uh, finally, I've been able to uh, get him to answer some questions, and he was kind enough to send me some videos that address some questions that I asked him. So Richard, first and foremost, tell us a little bit about uh, your background. How long have you been involved in the uh, development of filter media for aquariums and also I believe for ponds. How long has that been going on and uh, how did that get started? Well, ever since I've had a pond, I've always been interested in filter media and I've always been interested in finding better ways to create more efficient and more effective filtration. But the actual development of filter media, I would say probably is about 10 years as far as the actual development of filter media goes, I don't personally make the filter media that I sell. It's made by somebody else who developed early forms of that filter media 20, 25 years ago. And those early forms are still going strong in some people's sumps. So it's a good long lasting media. That's what initially drew me to it. It was unlike anything that I'd seen before. And it was actually the YouTube channel that started off the development of the filter media because a lot of people won't realize this but I was probably the first shop to start posting videos of fish and filtration advice and so on way back in the day and the reason I set the YouTube channel up was because my business suffered a catastrophic failure I had a business partner who dropped me in it for somewhere close to a hundred thousand English pounds which was secured against my house I had no means of digging myself out of that pit so in the very early days of youtube i decided to set up a channel because i realized that youtube would show up in search results on the internet and i just bought a video camera started making videos put videos out about little diy filters and then michael from aquabio uk contacted me i think it might have been via youtube or by email asking if i wanted to take a look at his media so i did and I didn't get back to him for over a year because I tested the media in our tanks in the shop, found that it worked better than anything else we had in there. The nitrates were actually coming down. I don't like to just take anybody at the word and I would suggest you don't do the same either. No matter what you think of them, no matter how, you know, you might think they're an expert in some field, don't take their word for anything. Use your own personal experience and the experience of others. Problem was, when I first got involved with Biohome, there wasn't the experience of others because it was only being sold in the Far East. Uh, there was one distributor, and that was in Singapore. Nobody in the UK was interested in it. So after a year of testing, realizing that it was very different to everything else we had in the shop, I made a few suggestions, and that resulted in the smaller, very porous pellet size called Mini Ultra, which is the small gray one. And then we went on then to develop different size and different densities for different types of filters and different flow rates. So that's really how it started about 10 years ago. Leading on from that and based on my own experience of the filter media, I started selling it online on eBay in the UK. And that was actually set up as a new business. I was doing that at night. I was doing the shop and installing ponds during the day. And I was doing the online stuff at night, including making videos and sending all the orders out and everything. So whilst the shop went, the online sales took off. Reached the point where I was able to give up the ponds, try to keep the shop going. It wouldn't keep going. The online stuff increased even more. I found less and less time for the shop. I closed the shop and now concentrate purely on online Thank you, Richard, for that. Now let's get right down to the meat of the matter. What, what's your answer to people who say that expensive filter media, we're talking about the biohomes, we're talking about the matrixes, the marine piers. What, what's your answer to people who say that those types of media are actually a waste of money and that the substrate, the decor, and even just sponges 
are plenty to actually support the ecosystem, support the beneficial bacteria in the tank. What's your answer to people who have that, uh, that viewpoint? The answer to that is not necessarily straightforward. There's a lot of factors to consider. For example, if you are manufacturing a filter media from scratch, i.e. the likes of the bio home, where you're basically creating small pellets of media from something else, then there is processes involved in that with and without giving the secrets of the construction away it involves the use of a few different sizes of sand a uh, binding agent powdered glass which is really just like a fine dust all that's mixed together with very selected trace elements which cost a horrendous amount but you only need a little pinch of them so they do go a long way um, all that's mixed up basically put into a huge toothpaste tube, it's loaded up like a rubbery, doughy mixture into there, gas ram pushes it out, it comes out in little pellets, goes through a chopper, which cuts it into the various lengths that we require from it, then it goes into a dryer, passes through that very, very slowly, then it goes into a kiln and it stays in a kiln for a certain amount of time, then it comes out the other end of the kiln, then it's bagged up and then it's sent out to you guys. Now all that takes materials, time, and quite a lot of money because electric power, especially for kilns, is quite expensive in the UK. So it's not a cheap media to manufacture. Contrast that with something like a quarried stone, white pumice, that is quite a good media and if you get it in the good grades which would be like all white then it is a very porous media as well obviously every piece is different but overall that's a good media problem is it's got a specific pH of about 8 so whilst it's suitable for goldfish koi marine fish Malawis Tanganyikans live bearers it's not so good for about 95% of the fish that people keep which would be from South America or Central America and Asia, which would generally require somewhere between 6.5 and 7 pH. That's a good one in the right conditions. That is quite cheap. In fact, it's very cheap compared to the likes of the bio home. But that is also sold under a different name. Those might look exactly the same, now, Corey from Aquarium Co-op touched on this particular media in the last video in this series. And it's basically just white pumice, you know, it's white pumice. Everybody knows it's white pumice. Um, one is sold pretty cheaply and is a very, very good quality. The other is an exceptionally variable quality media often containing grey stones and black stones which are just other random volcanic rocks and are sold for a horrendous price. Now knowing about the manufacturing processes of this and the quarrying and cleaning processes of this you can understand why that is more expensive than that when it's bought as white pumice. Can't understand why they're both about the same price when one is bought as the trademarked product that isn't described as white pumice. Good marketing does play a huge role in what people are willing to believe and what they're willing to pay for media. And marketing something is very very different to simply explaining what something is made of and how it works. That is a natural rock. Every piece is different so there's no possible way to work out how much surface area is in a cubic foot or a litre or a kilogram or a pound it's a natural rock every bit's different so therefore you can't work out how much is required to treat a certain amount of water to get a certain desired effect now with other types of media that are manufactured each piece is pretty much the same as every other piece I know it certainly is with a bio home if you crack a piece of that open and look at it under a microscope and then crack another piece open it'll look pretty much the same piece to piece so therefore you've got a more consistent product and it's not just the bio home that's consistent if you get ceramic rings from one manufacturer they'll all be consistent if you get the little sintered glass balls from the likes of eheim they'll all be consistent jbl stuff will be consistent 
because it's a manufactured media. So in effect, you're probably paying a little bit more for a more consistent internal structure to the media, so you know that every piece is working as hard as every other piece, and you're also paying a bit towards the actual manufacturing costs of it as well. It's not just dug out the ground, you know. So to the people who say that expensive media products are a waste of money and substrate and sponges can do the same job because they provide all the surface area the bacteria needs, I would say that they were 100% right. What? I bet you weren't expecting me to say that. But if we're talking about half a cycle, which is the aerobic side of things, those people are 100% right. Aerobic bacteria convert ammonia to nitrite, nitrite to nitrate, water changes get rid of nitrate. If you look anywhere on the internet, on Google search, nitrate cycle aquarium, that's the information you'll be given. In fact, again, I'll go back to Corey, he's got an excellent video on that first part of the cycle. I think he used M&Ms um, or some other sorts of candies in little bowls and he was taking them out and explaining it. It's very good. If you want to learn about the aerobic side of the nitrate cycle, that's a good one. So Ben, please put the link to Corey's video in the video description. That would help people. But there is another side, which is the anaerobic side of things. That, again, can be achieved naturally. If you've got a fully planted tank, a nice deep substrate, whether it's gravel or sand or some sort of planting medium, anaerobic pockets do develop in there. Plus, your plants will suck up the nitrate, as long as the stock in the tank is balanced and doesn't go to a critical point where it's actually producing more nitrate than could be taken up naturally, you can achieve a full cycle doing it like that as well. You know, that's easily achievable as long as you don't overstock the tank. And there's numerous channels on YouTube where you'll see really well set up planted tanks, minimal stocking, perfect conditions, minimal filtration as well. In those circumstances, there's no need to do anything else with your filters. If you have a natural system that's replicating the ecosystem that that fish or those species would naturally live in, you've got the right stuff in there, zero ammonia, zero nitrite, zero nitrate. That's a full cycle, really easy to achieve as long as you understand what is required to do so. So I don't think that anybody will be arguing that that isn't achievable because it's basically a natural process. But if you have got one of the tanks that is, well, let's be honest, 99% of the types of tanks that people keep, there's an unnatural amount of fish in there. There's not enough plants. The substrate probably isn't really capable of supporting anaerobic activity. A lot of people run with no substrate. And quite often the filtration is underpowered. In those circumstances, the only cycle that you're going to achieve is at best zero ammonia, zero nitrite and nitrates through the roof because you've got everything there that the aerobic bacteria needs. You've not got much there for the anaerobic bacteria and, and that is where specific filter media comes in. Porous filter media, whether it's a natural product or whether it's a product created from natural ingredients. Basically, if you've got enough of that, for the size of the tank and the stocking scenario, you can support enough anaerobic bacteria to consume all that nitrate and convert it into soluble nitrogen. So you can achieve a full cycle. Again, it's just a simple, natural process. There's nothing really overly complicated about it. It's just understanding nature, you know? And that's basically what I try and explain in the videos. That concludes part one with uh, Richard Threw. Tune in for part two, where we will continue this uh, amazing discussion.